Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Now TV and Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. I do appreciate you being with me. I appreciate it so very, very much. Listen, let me ask you to do something, all right? If you are watching this program every week or on a regular basis, and if this is helping you in your Bible students, would you please go to my website, donkpreston.com or bibleprophecy.com, and on the contact tab, send, send me an email and just say, hey, you know what, Don? I really appreciate what you're doing there. I don't agree with it, or I find it challenging, or I really like what I'm uh, listening to, something like that. But the point being, just let me know that this program is a blessing to you, all right? Uh, I want to know that you out there in TV land are watching. I want to know that you are being blessed. I want to know that this program is provoking you to a deeper, more in-depth study of the Word of God. That, that's my focus, all right? My focus is not to be a troublemaker. <laughs> uh, I've been accused of that. Uh, my focus is to bring glory to God by helping us to better understand His Word, to put aside traditions, uh, to put aside man-made doctrines, and to go strictly back to the Scriptures, to understand them uh, in their original context. And then once we understand that, to glean from that what we can use for us today, what, what it means for us today to realize that God kept His promise 2,000 years ago, all right? So again, go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com, and go to the contact tab and just send me a real quick uh, email, you know? Say, <clears throat> if you want, don't want to do anything except watching you on Now TV. That's enough, all right? Uh, I just want to hear from you. Now, by the way, I want you to know that July the 9th through the 11th, all right, we had what we call our Preterist Pilgrim Weekend. This is a yearly event. We've been doing this for, my goodness gracious, almost 20 years now. Not quite, but almost 20 years. And this year's theme was the book of Revelation. We had five total speakers. We had subjects such as the synagogue of Satan. We had sub subjects like uh, the eschatology of the letters to the seven churches. And we had some lessons on the Israel's feast days and the book of Revelation. And we had lessons on the destruction of creation and the end of the millennium. So, look, we had some really, really great lessons. And guess what? The entire seminar of Preterist Pilgrim Weekend 2020 is available for you to watch free of charge on YouTube. Okay, now you can go to my website, donkpreston.com or bibleprophecy.com, and you'll find a link there. Or just go to YouTube and search for Preterist Pilgrim Weekend 2020. Uh, easy as it can be, absolutely free access to the great lectures at Preterist Pilgrim Weekend, which was held July the 9th through the 11th, of 2020. So I hope you'll take advantage of that. Okay, uh, you know, last week I gave you an awful lot of commentary on some various things. We didn't get to spend a lot of time uh, on Isaiah 28, but here's where we are, all right? We are continuing our discussion of the challenge of Christ. Jesus said unequivocally that His coming, His coming in judgment, was to be in the first century generation. Skeptics, scoffers, say he did not do that. Therefore, Jesus lied, or he failed. His apostles followed suit, saying that his coming was coming soon, coming shortly, without delay. Thus, 
The New Testament, we are told, is completely uninspired. It was written by a fake, a charlatan, or, you know, caused to be written by a fake and a charlatan. And Christianity falls according to this failure. What I've been sharing with you on this program, here on Now TV, is that the church has utterly failed to realize that Jesus never, ever promised to come back as a five foot five Jewish man in a physical body <coughs> riding on a literal cloud out of heaven to destroy the literal physical heaven and earth. He never promised that. I, I've shared with you from a host of Old Testament prophecies that since Jesus said he was going to come in the glory of the Father, that meant he was going to come like he had seen the Father come. And yet the Father had never ever come, literally and visibly and bodily. But he had used one nation over here to judge another nation over here. And when he did that, when he, when he sovereignly used this nation to judge and to, to destroy this nation, it was said that he came. He came on the clouds. He came in glory. He came in fire. He came with a shout. He came with the sound of a trumpet. And that's how Jesus said he was going to come in the judgment of Jerusalem in A.D. 70. Because you see, Jerusalem represented and symbolized the old covenant law of sin and death. That's why it had to be brought to an end. And that's why it did come to an end when Jesus in his sovereignty, as King of kings and Lord of lords, utilized as his Father had utilized this nation to judge that. Jesus used the Romans to destroy Jerusalem and put an end to the old covenant theocracy. So this is what I've been sharing with you. But of course, lots of different people have lots of different views about that. We are told, well, no, that can't be true because after all, in 2 Peter chapter 3, Peter said the day of the Lord would be when the earth and the elements therein are burned up. So what I've been sharing with you over the last several weeks, number one is that Peter said his doctrine of the day of the Lord was the reiteration of what the Old Testament prophets said. Number two, Peter said that the Old Testament prophets foretold the coming of the scoffers in the last days. Now, may I remind you at this point, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, if we are not in the last days, then there's not a yet future day of the Lord. If we are not in the last days, we're not looking for the scoffers to come saying, where is the promise of his coming? If we are not in the last days, there is no future, quote, end of time. And I don't know about you, but that sounds really, really good to me. I, I've just got to tell you, it sounds really, really good to me. So, what I've been sharing with you, i got to turn my phone off. I forgot to do that. And uh, so, there we go, taken care of now. And so, <clears throat> I've been sharing with you, since Peter said that the Old Testament foretold the coming of the scoffers before the day of the Lord, we have been, I've been sharing with you Isaiah chapter 28. Now, Isaiah chapter 28 is a passage that foretold the coming of scoffers. Now, it doesn't use the term last days, but it uses the, the terminology <clears throat> and discusses the concept of the rejected cornerstone, and it predicted the time in which the chief cornerstone, the precious stone, the tried cornerstone for the Messianic temple would be laid. Well, when was that? I think you know when that was, don't you? It was in the first century. So here is Peter saying, okay, the Old Testament foretold the coming of scoffers <coughs> in the last days. Isaiah chapter 28 foretold the coming of scoffers. Scoffers who would reject the tried, precious cornerstone. 
Well, that tried precious cornerstone is Jesus. When did Jesus come? In the last days. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. So, even though the term last days is not used in Isaiah chapter 28, when it predicted the coming of the scoffers in the days of the laying of the foundation stone, the tried precious stone, and since Jesus was that stone and since he appeared in the last days, that means that, once again, even though the term last days is not used in Isaiah 28, it nonetheless means that's when it was going to take place in the last days. So Isaiah 28 is without any question whatsoever a prediction of the coming of the scoffers in the last days. Now, since they appeared in the first century, are we supposed to believe that the day of the Lord hasn't come yet? After 2,000 years? Now look, folks, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37 says, Now, <clears throat> the one who is coming will come, and he will not delay. Well, I'm sorry, 2,000 years is a delay. You can't make it anything other than a delay. So here's Isaiah. He predicted the coming of the scoffers in the last days. The last days are when Jesus appeared. And the scoffers would deny the coming of the Lord foretold by Isaiah chapter 28. Well, okay. Then did Isaiah 28 predict the end of time? Well, let's go. We're, we're going to jump ahead here because this is really, really critical that we understand this framework and this context of this coming of the scoffers in the last days. I'm going to begin reading with verse, <clears throat> pardon me, verse 21. Now remember, Isaiah has just predicted the scoffers. And he says, For the Lord will rise up as at Perizim. He will be angry as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his awesome work, pardon me, and bring to pass his act, his, oh my goodness, his unusual act. Now, therefore, do not be scoffers. In other words, the Lord's going to come. Don't scoff at this. Do not deny it. Do not be scoffers, lest your bonds be made strong. For I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a destruction even unto the whole earth. Oh, wait a minute. So we have the prediction of the coming of the scoffers. The scoffers would come in the last days, 2 Peter 3. They would come in the days of the laying of the foundation stone of the Messianic temple, which is Jesus, who appeared in the last days. And Isaiah calls on these scoffers not to scoff at what was going to happen. <clears throat> now, I want you to notice, remember what I've shared with you over so many videos now. And that is, how to put this, uh, <laughs> other than just simply repeat it. Jesus said he was going to come in the glory of the Father. Now, the Lord says here in, uh, in Isaiah, and I'm, I'm just going to turn back there to 1 Chronicles chapter 14. Now remember, the Lord says, For the Lord will rise up as at Perazim. Well, how did the Lord rise up as at Perazim? In other words, He's going to come as He came 
at Parazim. Well, in 1 Chronicles chapter 14, verse 8 and following, when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David, and David heard of it and went out against them. See, the Philistines want David. They want to kill him. Then the Philistines went and made a raid on the valley of Rephaim, and David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? Then the Lord said to him, Go up, for I will deliver them into your hand. So they went up to baal Perazim. And David defeated them there. Then David said, God has broken through my enemies by my, la- by my hand like a breakthrough of water. Therefore they called that place, the name of that place, praise him. And when they left their gods there, David gave a commandment that they should be burned with fire. Then the Philistines came again and made a raid on the valley. Therefore, David inquired again of of God, and God said to him, You shall not go up after them. You shall circle around them and come upon them in front of the mulberry trees. Now watch this. And it shall come to pass when you hear a sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, then you shall go out to battle. Now watch this. Catch the power of this. For God has gone out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines. Um, Folks, you catch the power of that? Here... Here we find, and I'm, I'm turning over now to Joshua chapter 10, uh, and I hope you're doing the same thing. Joshua chapter 10. So let me discuss 1 Chronicles 14 just a little bit. Remember now, Isaiah chapter 28. The Lord said, I'm going to lay a foundation stone in the last days. And... The Lord will rise up at Parazim, like he did at Parazim. Okay, how did the Lord rise up? How did the Lord come as at Parazim? Well, it it tells us there, the Lord told David, you know, after the Lord had already whipped the Philistines one time, Well, here come the Philistines again. And and David says, Lord, shall I just go out and whip them again? And the Lord said, no, 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 don't do that. I want you to circle around. I want you to come out at the mulberry trees. Now, I don't know where those mulberry trees were. (laughs) Anyway, and the Lord said, you don't make any move until you hear a sound of movement in the tops of the mulberry trees and then you will know that I, the Lord. Now, what would David hear? A sound of rustling in the mulberry trees. But God says, then you will know that I, the Lord, have gone out before you to defeat the Philistines. Here's the coming of the Lord, folks. Okay, wait a minute. Jesus said he was going to come in judgment as the Lord had come in the Old Testament. In 1 Chronicles chapter 14, we have the coming of the Lord. But it was not a visible, literal, bodily coming of the Lord. Although it was said, the Lord your God will go out before you. He will defeat the Philistines for you. Do you see this, this is highly wrought metaphoric language of how God in the unseen realm, unseen to be sure, but very real, but God came. He was not seen by the Philistines. He was not seen by David, but he came. And he said, I, the Lord God, will go out before you. 
This is incredible. So, we have an absolute perfect example because I want you to notice this. Isaiah chapter 28. The Lord it will come, come when? In the last days, He will come against the scoffers. He will come as He came against the Philistines at Parazim. Wait a minute. The coming of the Lord of 2 Peter 3 would be a coming of the Lord as at Parazim. Isaiah 28, verse 21. Okay, remember, Peter says, folks, I'm telling you about the day of the Lord that was foretold by the old covenant prophets. And the scoffers would come in the day, in those days, the last days before that day of the Lord. And it would be a day of the Lord as at Parazim. But the coming of the Lord as at Parazim, which is to be the day, was to be the day of the Lord of 2 Peter chapter 3, or 2 Peter 3 was to be a day of the Lord just like the coming of the day of the Lord of 1 Chronicles 14 was not to be a literal, visible, bodily coming of the Lord. Now, I'm sorry if this sounds repetitious, but folks, listen, th this is the kind of concept and this is the kind of language that normally you and I are not familiar with nearly as we should be. And yet here it is. Would anyone argue that in 1 Chronicles chapter 14 that Yahweh... The Father came floating out of heaven, literally, visibly, bodily, on a literal cumulus cloud to destroy the Philistines. No, nobody saw him. But remember, remember, that's to be the kind of coming of the day of the Lord of 2 Peter chapter 3. That was to be a coming of the Lord in the glory of the Father. That was to be a coming of the Lord as Jesus had seen the Father act in judgment before John 5, 21 and following. So once again, since the day of the Lord of 2 Peter chapter 3, would be the day of the Lord concerning which the scoffers would say, where is it? But it would be the day of the Lord foretold by Isaiah, who foretold the coming of the scoffers in the last days, who would deny the coming of the Lord. But the Lord says, you know what? I'm coming, and I'm going to come as at Parazim. And yet the coming of the Lord as at Parazim, as we've already pointed out, was not a literal, visible, bodily coming of the Lord, then that means that the coming of the Lord of 2 Peter chapter 3 was not to be a literal, visible, bodily coming of the Lord. Oh, but you see, we're not done. And almost out of time, But this, so this will have to be rather quick. But he says, I will be angry as in the valley of Gibeon. Well, let's see. In Joshua chapter 10, and uh, the verses are 10... And following, I, I have a tr difficulty remembering this for some reason, but here is the battle when, you know, the, the sun stood still and Joshua holds up his hands and what have you. Now, notice this, Joshua 10, 10. So the Lord routed them before Israel, killed them with a great slaughter at Gibeon, chased them along the road that goes to Beth Horon, uh, and struck them down as far as as. Uh, as Azika and, and Makeda. And it happened as they fled before Israel, and we're on the descent of Beth Horon, that the Lord cast down large hailstones from heaven on them as far as Azekah, and they died there. There were more who died from the hailstones than the children of Israel killed with the sword. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel and said in the, in the sight of Israel, Son, stand over Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Alalon, 
So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the people had revenge upon their enemies. And verse 10, or excuse me, 13 says, Is this not written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. And there has been no day like that before or after it. Now look, folks, here we have Joshua and Israel fighting against the Amorites. And they, they were doing okay as long as Joshua was holding up his arm. I can't hold up my arm. I've got rotator cuff tear. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's bad. Anyway, and so what happened? Just like at Perazim, the Lord fought on the behalf of Israel. He whipped Israel's enemies. Well, Isaiah 28 says, In the last days, before the great and the terrible day of the Lord, before the day of the Lord, I am going to come. Do not scoff at what I am telling you, the Lord said. Lest the overwhelming scourge lest the overwhelming destruction take you away. And it's going to be a time like Perazim and Gibeon. As I close today's video, I simply cannot overemphasize how important it is to realize that 2 Peter 3 is the reiteration of the Old Testament prophets' prediction of the day of the Lord when the scoffers would come. Isaiah 28 is a prediction of the time, the last days, when the scoffers would come. But that day of the Lord, foretold by Isaiah 28, re being reiterated by Peter, would be the day of the Lord like in similar fashion as at Perazim and at Gibeon. But that was not to be a literal, visible, bodily day of the Lord. We will have more next week. I will see you then.